Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our virtual reception for our new exhibits, POCO Open 2022 and Abstraction Contraption. I'm Mary Kay Baxter, the Deputy Director at HCAC. I'll be introducing tonight's presenters while Annie Braunschweig, Exhibits and Programs Assistant and Cam uh, Pamperna, Community and Web Relations Director, monitor the presentation and monitor the chat. Tonight, it is our pleasure to present two exciting exhibits. In gallery one, we have HOCO Open 2022, a salon style non-juried exhibit featuring artwork in a variety of media. And in gallery two, we have abstraction contraption featuring wood sculptures by Andrew Flanders and mixed media works by Stanley Weneker. We'll begin with exhibits uh, with the exhibit in Gallery 1, HOCO Open 2022, a total of 97 artists submitted paintings, photographs, sculptures, and more through a modified physically distanced drop-off. Artists have not let the pandemic get in the way of their hard work and creativity, as the artworks submitted this year were fabulous. We'll start with two Director's Choice Awards presented by HCAC Executive Director Colleen West. Welcome, Colleen. Thank you, Mary, very much. Uh, last year, the Arts Council celebrated its 40th anniversary. And to mark this occasion, we announced a special Director's Choice uh, Anniversary Award. Tonight, we are closing out that anniversary year with two Director's Choice Awards. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm sorry we can't be doing this in person. We thought we could, um, but we're making do. And uh, we are just uh, moving forward. So this year, I'm using these awards to recognize and encourage artists that explore socially conscious art and modern sculpture, two forms that are traditionally underrepresented in local galleries. I am awarding a $200 Director's Choice Award to Errol McKinson for a letter to prisoner Bates. I'm touched by Errol's use of warm muted colors and his uh, intimate modern uh, pictorial space to shed light on a personal moment in the life of a prisoner. The second $200 award goes to Kyle Drummond for, oh, I had no idea, a modern sculpture made up of rustic wood and metal found objects, which makes me smile every time I see it. As you will note, when we get to the virtual walkthrough, there are very few sculptures in this exhibit, and I hope this award will encourage more sculptors to con consider participating in our exhibits. Congratulations, Errol and Kyle. And if you're here, Errol, would you like to uh, say a few words? I sure do. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so very much. And, um, you know, I put a lot into this work and um, I was actually inspired by um, the series um, Downton Abbey um, for this painting and it really, took me, you know, I put a lot of passion into it. And I just want to say thank you all so much for the recognition. And it's it's a pleasure and you have made my day. You're welcome, Errol. And your hard work and your passion clearly showed through in this painting. As I said, it was uh, very impressed. I was very impressed by it. So congratulations again. Thank you so much. And Kyle, are you here? Kyle? I guess Kyle is not here. Um, I'm, I'm sure he'll hear about his award. So I'd like to thank both Errol and Kyle. And I would also like to thank all of the artists in this year's HOCO Open for, ex for the exciting creative work that you do and for sharing it with us. So thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to give a shout out to Arts Council board member Thomas Engelman, who's in attendance. The Arts Council would not be um, able to produce valuable community-based programming like HOCO Open without their sage advice and uh, strong support. So uh, thank you to our board members represented tonight by Thomas Engelman. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Robin Holiday, owner and curator of Horse Spirit Art Gallery. Five years ago, Robin approached us about creating a special emerging artist award for Howard County artists. Here to tell us the story behind this award and to announce the, the recipients 
um, is gallery owner and arts patron extraordinaire, Robin Holiday. Thank you, Colleen, for that really gracious introduction. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, this is our fifth year. Um, the Covington Award is after my grandmother, uh, Mabel Covington. She actually wasn't even my biological grandmother. She's my step-grandmother. And um, she certainly had a lot of challenges in her life. She grew up um, her childhood during the depression. She lost her first two husbands to a war. Um, and then she found herself raising me by surprise. The first four years of my life, I lived with her and she raised me. And the reason this is so important is through all of this, my grandmother created an art gallery for artists to come from miles around in rural North Carolina to do art. It was women. And she did this because she believed that by creating art, you would find the goodness in life, even through the direst of times. And when you found the goodness in life, it would bring out the best of your humanity. So in that spirit, it is my absolute pleasure, pleasure to, um, to give these Covington Awards. Um, they are for artists who have been showing or selling their work for three years or less. So what this means is you can be emerging in the sense of just starting out on your art career, or you could have been doing art for a while and you had the bravery to step forward and show the world what you have to offer because both of those are really important in terms of emerging. So I'd like to introduce my co-juror for the last five years, artist Deborah McClowski. Even though it says Robin Holiday on her screen, it is actually Deborah McClowski. Deborah is an artist at Horse Spirit. Um, she is also a dear friend of mine. She is accomplished. She is the current president of the Color Pencil Society of America. She does pastels beautifully and mixed media. And um, she's going to say a few words as well as I am. I'd like to start with the honorable mentions. So the first honorable mention and a $50 gift certificate to Horse Spirit Arts Gallery goes to Chen Gang Wang for Wild Horses on the Beach. Can you bring that painting up? There we go. I'm sorry, it's actually a photograph. This is a very well done photograph. I have looked at so many horses on a beach and they don't capture my attention, but this one really does. Um, not only do you see the gentleness and caring amongst the herd, but you also see the beautiful backdrop of the beach. It's well composed and interesting. Um, this painting, or excuse me, this photograph is actually for sale that you can buy through the Howard County Arts Council for $300. It's a large digital print on canvas. And congratulations, Chen, Chen Gang Wang. Congratulations. The second honorable mention goes to Tarnija McCall. So this is an oil painting. Um, this is actually quite fun. Um, it's a simplicity of a house on some rolling hills with really unusual colors and it's on a square palette. Um, and so it's, it's quite captivating and interesting and it makes me smile when I look at it. Again, this is also for sale through the Arts Council for $875. It's called Fall Skies of Western Howard County. So congratulations to Tarnesia. The third honorable mention goes to Susan Anderson for Calm on the Birch. So I have to tell you, I would like this painting. I would buy this painting. I would put this painting in my home. Um, it is just lovely. It is calm, it is well executed. You see the trees up front and then they fade into the background. Just the rhythm of how the trees are done um, is just lovely. The color palette, and I'll tell you, this painting is well framed. And um, as somebody who wants to say to an emerging artist, how you frame your work really matters. My eye does not go to the frame. But this frame, although you might not be able to see it in the picture, 
the uh, fillet that's around the painting is a copper color that really enhances the painting. So the painting, in, the painting is enhanced by the frame. And, and so in addition to a beautiful painting, I give this artist an A plus. So Susan Anderson, very nice job. Okay, so here we go. But all the honorable mentions receive a $50 gift certificate to Horse Spirit Arts Gallery. Third place receives a $75 gift certificate and it goes to Linda Winkler for the cow. So this painting is both captures my admiration as sort of a, an old painting from a different, different era, as well as, as just so fun as you look at it um, and what she's doing. And so I think the composition is well done. The colors are interesting and they, they pull it away from an older era. So um, I'm gonna open the floor to artist Deborah McClowski. Um, Deborah, what, what, what would you add? Well, I, I, I agree with you. This reminds me strongly of, of uh, the genre paintings, uh, the Dutch genre paintings of the 19th century. Um, it's beautifully executed, it's well-designed. Um, I particularly like the way she's handled the, the, counter, the counterbalance between the, the woman's backward movement and the forward movement, movement of the cow. It, it's beautifully rendered. That sense of force and, and balance is really well done. It's a very nice piece. Thank you, Deborah. We'd actually like to open the floor to Linda Winkler. Linda, are you online? Well, I hope someone will let sweet Linda know that, that she won because it, it is beautiful painting. All right, guys, let's go to second place. So second place is um, a $100 gift certificate to the gallery. And this goes to Heidi Hewitt for silver anniversary. It is an oil painting. I have to tell you, I feel like I stepped into this painting. Um, I feel chilly and I feel the sun on my back. Um, it's, it's very well done. Um, the use of light um, and it's nicely framed. So um, Heidi, very well done. Deborah, what would you say about this painting? Oh, uh, I would agree with you. Uh, this is a, a beautiful composition. Um, she very skillfully moves the viewer's eye in, into the painting from the bottom um, in that band of, of, of sunlit snow. Um, I was very impressed uh, with her use of not just direct light, but reflected light that you can see um, in, the, in the crevices where, where light is bouncing up from something onto the ref, uh, reflective surface of the snow. Um, I, I think her painting technique and her draftsmanship are just expert level. Um, I, I'm with you, I can feel, I can feel the chill, I can, I can smell the pines, and I can hear the snow crunching under my feet when I, when I look at this. It's, but just an extraordinarily well done painting. And thank you, Deborah. It's amazing these artists that we're showing you are emerging artists. It really is just amazing. And if Heidi Hewitt is online, um, would you like to say a few words? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so very much. This is such an honor. Thank you very, very much. Um, this was uh, certainly, um, it was exciting to undertake something like this. I had never done a snow scene before. And so I, I watched a lot of YouTube videos and did a lot of trial and error. And <laughs> it's called Silver Anniversary because I took the photograph last winter. Uh, my husband and I were celebrating our 25th anniversary and we were married in February and Virginia and we rented a camp cabin and this was one of our little winter walks celebrating that and it's a 25th anniversary silver anniversary so it's kind of a funny name for a snow scene but that's how it got it but um, I'm very very excited thank you so very much congratulations Heidi thank yeah, you congratulations it's my pleasure it's really well done thank you yeah all right, guys, for the first place award is a $100 cash award from the gallery. And first place goes to Rebecca Favada. This is a chalk pastel painting called Sir Buffington. This painting is amazing. Um, I usually like my cats with hair on them, but this cat just is captivating and I find myself wanting to pet him. 
Um, he's regal. The attention to detail is remarkable, particularly for a pastel. And you're looking right into his, notice the claw detail on this regal figure, and then it fades into the background. It, um, it's really impressive. So um, Rebecca, what a wonderful job you did. Uh, Deborah, what would you add? Um, I think this is a, a superbly executed pastel. It, it exhibits very strong drawing skills and, and real proficiency in the medium of pastel. It's well composed, um, it's harmonious in color, and it perfectly captures the, the soft velvet texture of the furless cat skin along with I love that bold stare, just looking right at the viewer. Um, I, I, the eyes don't follow you in the in this in the in the gallery because I tested it, but but they come real close. <laughs> it's it's really a lovely piece. Very well done. Thank you, Rebecca. Congratulations! And if you're on the call, would you like to say a few words? Rebecca, are you online? Well, I hope people will let Rebecca know. I, I would love to meet the artist who won the awards. I'm so impressed with your skills and, and that you put yourself out there. Good for you and congratulations and keep doing more art. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you so much, Robin. And congratulations to the winners. Um, awardees, after tonight's reception, we'll contact you. You'll get a message from Annie about picking up the awards. Now I'm delighted to introduce the exhibit in Gallery 2, Abstraction Contraptions. Tonight we have Andrew Flanders and Stanley Winokur who will talk about their artworks and artistic practices. Um, after they speak, we'll open it up to all the questions and answers from the audience. So as they present, please feel free to put questions in the chat box. Um, first, we'll start with Andrew. Andrew received his BFA from the Maryland Institute College of Art in 2017. His abstract sculptures utilize wood and texture, mimicking similar divots and blemishes of the body. In an interplay between organic and utilitarian, they maintain their own personality and presence. Andrew, welcome. We'd love to have you speak. Hi there. Uh, congrats to all the winners. Um, my works in the show come from a need to investigate uh, the relationship between craftsmen and the objects or contraptions that they create. The, the field of woodworking and construction is kind of hyper-masculine and toxic at times. It unnecessarily genders labor and the act of making something with grit, sweat, and a closed-minded worldview. Uh, in my early 20s, trying to learn these crafts and uh, from a skilled older generation is kind of like walking on eggshells. The older crusty woodworking teacher we've all had believes that their skill and their labor kind of allows them to take social missteps. And as students, we kind of allow name calling and problematic jokes and maybe even a little cat calling to happen while we try to catch a glimpse of some table saw trick or learn how to sharpen a chisel the right way. And I, I asked myself, uh, how could these highly skilled makers with such a sensitivity to craft be so insensitive to social issues? I'm kind of fascinated by this emotional disconnect, and I try to make sculptures to understand it. Um, some of the freestanding works in the show are, are early ways of thinking about form, finish, and utility. I think these works kind of illustrate the vulnerability of craftsmen. They try to answer the question of what do you have when you look past a high craft or a sensitivity to craft and making. And these sculptures, we kind of see silhouettes of stools, chairs, or tables with the legs and supports at the bottom. But when we try to inspect some of the sculptures, it's a bit harder to categorize. They're too specific in some areas, too broad in others and some of them simply have no function. The objects are kind of in visual limbo. The sculptures are kind of walking, talking imitations of older craftsmen themselves, a mixture of sweat, labor, and a lack of social grace. And the wall hanging sculptures in the show kind of continue this line of thought with marred finishes and paint being sanded away. These forms originally come from my obsession 
of making buckets, but I kind of began to expand and twist the forms in on themselves. These bigger sculptures almost question their own medium and the choice of their maker. They almost imitate textiles and fabric, rejecting the wood's innate rigidity and giving into a surrender to gravity once hung onto the wall. The sculptures become a little anthropomorphic in these cases, almost rejecting the intentions of the maker who is about to glue them together to make a solid square object or a piece of furniture, leaving the sculpture to dislocate and shed their finish in the process. Uh, that's about it for my artist talk. So thank you for your time. Thanks so much, Andrew. Please stay on. If anyone has questions for Andrew or want to engage, you know, please put it in the chat. Um, I am now pleased to introduce our next artist this evening, Stanley Winokur from Columbia, Maryland. Stanley uses a variety of material to create his abstract works. Starting from what Stanley describes as a place of uncertainty, his abstract mixed media works capture a fleeting, the fleeting feelings, emotional struggles, and visual and mental images that people experience. So Stanley, welcome to the stage. Thank you very much. I, I can't, I can see you, but I can't see anybody else. Is that the way it should be? Yeah. You can um, put your view in gallery mode if you want to see some other people, or you could just talk to me and that's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this work is um, a, a departure from a lot of the work that I had done previously. It, it, it relates to it, but it is a departure. Um, it came about because um, the work I had done previously was, was often done on, on heavy pieces. It was done on wood with cement and covering with fabric. It was done on larger canvases. And I was simply having trouble physically moving them around. So I decided that I wanted to do a series on um, illustration board, which I liked very much. And I, the, the structure for me was to have, it, have the pieces surrounded by a white space. So um, it's deliberately, the space is deliberately not filled in around the whole campus. So it relates to a lot of my earlier work. If you look at a website, um, you'll see that I've used uh, fabric for a long time, um, really since the late 1980s. Um, in incorporated fabric in my work because there's, there's a lot of uh, sensuality to fabric and a lot of different texture to it. And texture and color have been continuously important to me in, in abstract work that I've done. I've also done realistic work, um, that's a whole different issue. But um, in the abstract work, uh, color and texture remain significant. Um, so these pieces were a departure and uh, they, they involve a lot of fabric and, and acrylic paint. Mostly this is acrylic paint. Um, I live in a, in, a, in a house in a studio that, uh, in where I'm surrounded by fabric. My, my wife and I share a studio and she really, she's an artist of many kinds, but at the moment, very much a fabric artist with weaving and, and uh, spinning and uh, knitting and crocheting and, and all of the rest of that. So we have lots of fabrics around. In addition to that, and lots of yarn around. So I have access to some of these things. In addition to that, um, uh, I enjoy the, the, uh, the odd thing of going to a uh, secondhand store and finding all kinds of uh, interesting pieces of fabric. And uh, usually in the women's section, and uh, people looking around at me and say, what's he doing in there? <laughs> but I, I do get them and I can do find all kinds of interesting and wonderful pieces of, of fabric that you can do all kinds of things with. And uh, in my work, uh, whenever I get a piece of fabric, I'm not, I don't feel stuck with whatever that is. I always feel that I can change the paint, I can paint it and change the color of it. I can take tear parts of it out and add things into it. So uh, fabric provides a lot of flexibility. Um, the work itself uh, it tends to be 
uh, focused in, 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 into a center space. Um, and uh, it, it's an attempt to uh, simplify in some way uh, an expression of, uh, of feeling and emotion uh, and, uh, and, and, and to experiment with very different, different approaches in the same mode. So you find if you look at the pieces, some pieces are, are thicker and heavier and some pieces are lighter. Um, uh, it's, 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 it's easy to get stuck in doing the same thing over and over again. And so uh, my effort is to, to change it and to, uh, to try different things. Um, the, the, this exhibit was, uh, the pieces for this exhibit were uh, juried back, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And um, the, the work that I've been doing more recently is not representative in this, is not represented in this exhibit, uh, but you might be interested that um, there's one piece, uh, I think it's number 12, that is from a more recent period. And in that piece, what you find is that I started to change the white background to a colored background, either black or a dark color. And, and instead of confining the pieces to the center, um, they were spread out throughout the whole campus. So you'll find that in the in piece number 12 looks very different than the other pieces because it doesn't have that central focus. It is uh, an all over piece. Um, what else could I say for you? Um, the, the concept, I think it was mentioned uh, at the outset, I think uh, Mary stated it, uh, of uncertainty runs through my working process. Uh, whether it is abstract work actually or realistic work, um, the, the, the role of uncertainty always plays a role because as an artist, uh, even when you think you know what you're going to do, um, it doesn't always work out that way and you have many decisions to make. Uh, and so there's a lot of uncertainty around it, and particularly with abstract work. Um, you find that uh, you don't know where exactly you're going to begin, and you begin somewhere, and then somewhere develops into something else and into something else. And so I can't predict from the beginning to the end where it is going to come out. Um, Lots of times the, the work that I've done previously has been worked over and sanded and scraped. And, and so it's, it's not quite the same as this, but here too, uh, pieces have been taken on, taken off, put on, uh, in some cases uh, moved around. So there's always, you're always playing with the images that you have to see whether you can create something that's interesting and uh, evocative that will some way capture your, uh, touch you in some ways. Um, and, and I, you know, borrow from techniques from, from different places. And, and the piece that you have out front, for example, you can see the black marks in the orange space. And that black marks is actually uh, burning because the, the paper uh, was wrapping paper that was, was burnt with a uh, soldering iron. And that was a technique that came out of a workshop in and Jim Chi, which is a Korean paper art. So um, I would say the work borrows from a lot of different areas. Um, thank you, thank you, Stanley. I'm gonna, um, uh, I was searching through the chat and I can't find any questions because I think we've all gotten wise to Zoom over the last two years and we're direct <laughs> messaging each other. Um, thank you, Stanley. Thank you, Andrew, so much for sharing about your work. And again, um, please come and visit the gallery in person. We have one more week of this exhibit. If you haven't seen it already, um, it's it's really a wonderful exhibit to walk thank through. Um, but thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being on the call. Um, we're going to uh, fast forward through this section. Um, we wish we could have hosted the event um, in person, but we're so glad that we've been able to connect with the artists, uh, you know, even virtually. Both shows are up for another week, um, and our uh, Annie and Pam are going to put the links to the exhibit in the chat if you want to see them virtually. So ladies, if you can put those back into the chat again. 
Um, thank you for coming to the virtual reception. We're yeah. going to stop the recording now because we're going to walk together through the virtual exhibits. Um, yeah. If anyone uh, is listening to this later, please make sure you click on those virtual exhibits and see and see the show.